Thank you, Lord. 1 Samuel 16, verse 1. When you have it, say amen. amen. And the word of God reads, Now the Lord said to Samuel, You have mourned long enough for Saul. I have rejected him. Listen to the verbiage, church. I have rejected him. Talking about King Saul. I have, God have rejected him as king of Israel. Quit trying to bless something that God has cursed, y'all. If God says over, it's over. Quit trying to hold on to people, places, and things that your time, my God, say with me. The Bible says, you have mourned long enough, my God, for Saul. I have rejected, this is God talking to Samuel. I have rejected him as king of Israel, so fill your flask, flask with oil, with oil, olive oil, and go to Bethlehem. Find him, Bethlehem, that's what Jesus, come on, Bethlehem. Find a man named Jesse who lives there, for I have selected one of his sons to be my king. But Samuel asked, this is Samuel talking to the Lord, how can I do that? If Saul, talking about King Saul, hears about it, he will kill me. See, they had reverence for the people of God in the Old Testament. Take a heifer, God says. See, God, you can't put God up against them. God called for, he provides for. He said, take a heifer with you. The <laughs> I thought about my grandma, boy. She used to show up you that word right there. Come on, T.K. <laughs> Oh, Lord, it ain't he. <laughs> no, Take a helper with you, the Lord replied, and say that you have come to make a sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse, God is strategic, y'all, to the sacrifice, and I will show you, God's telling Samuel, I will show you which of his sons to anoint for me. Verse 4 says, so Samuel did as the Lord instructed. See, obedience is better than a sacrifice, y'all. When he arrived at Bethlehem, the elders of the town came trembling, to meet him. What's wrong, they asked. Do you come in peace? See, when a prophet would show up in a town, that the people didn't get excited. They was wondering, my God, if, what's going on? What's, what's happening? See, what I say, they trembled, my God, Sandra, because heard the prophet. Because the prophet didn't come prophesying houses, lands, and car. They come prophesying, thus said the Lord. And usually when thus said the Lord was coming, it was time for a cleansing. And people died in the midst of the cleansing. Oh, there will be casualties in a war. Don't be one of the casualties in this war going over Christ church because you're in a war for him if you're a member of this family. He don't want you to stay, come out. He wants you to stay in, bound, defeated. But the prophet came and the people began to tremble. And then Samuel calmed him and said, I come in peace. Verse 9 say, I mean 5 say, yes, Samuel, you proud. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Purify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. Oh, my God, when you come before the Lord, you got to come through mercy and grace. Then Samuel performed a purification rite or writ for, for, for Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. Verse 6 says, when they arrived, Samuel took one look at Elab and thought, surely this is the Lord's anointing. He looked and thought, surely. We can, make, we can miss it, y'all. But the Lord said, Samuel, don't judge by appearance, height, appearances or uh, 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 height, for I have rejected him. The Lord doesn't see things the way you see them. People judge by outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Jump down to verse number 9, I mean uh, 10. In the same way, all seven of Jesse's sons were presented to Samuel. But Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen any of these. Then Samuel asked, are these all the sons you have? They're still the youngest. Oh, my God. Jesse replied, but he's out there in the field watching the sheep and the goats. Since send for him at once, Samuel said, we will not sit down to eat until he arrives. So Jesse sent for him. He was dark and handsome, just like your pastor, with beautiful eyes. I love God. He loves me. That he put me in the Bible. He said I was fearfully and wonderfully made. I can't get nobody. Verse number 13 says, so David stood. Mm. He, was, he was dark and beautiful and, and, and had beautiful eyes. And the Lord said, this is the one, anoint him. So, so as David stood there among his brothers, Samuel took the flax of oil, olive oil he had brought and anointed David with the oil. And the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David from that day on. Lord, handle your business through me. Calm me down as you teach your people. Thank you for this word. Yes, I am excited, but control my spirit and crucify my flesh. As I stand before the people of God, I give you honor and I give you glory. Lord, I thank you that I'm free to obey you. Lord, I would never allow, Father God, religion or perception, Lord, to stifle 
Father God, the freedom of the spirit that you walk through, work through and through me, Father God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. As I told y'all, my God, and I'm going to get this word out. There's a price that you and I have to pay. As I told y'all before, there's always, my God, Jesus had a crisis before the cross. He had to be beaten and disfigured before he had the victory on the cross. There's always a crisis associated to, to real ministry or to a real marriage. My God, do I got any married folk that's been through a crisis? Come on, somebody. See what I'm trying to say? Anything that's worth having is going to be tested by trials and tribulations. Oh, my God, but don't count them out. Don't count them out because you're going through turbulence and things is happening. That don't mean, my God, that God ain't with you. Because throughout this story, as I begin to walk you through stuff, along the way, my God, David, my God, God was always with David. And I don't want to get ahead of myself, but God was always with David. Even though when he was on the run, after he killed the giant, God was still with him. So because you're on the run don't mean God ain't with you. Because things that's happening in your life don't mean God ain't with you. Sometimes God got to send you on the run to get your attention. So this chapter that I just read to you opens with God reminding Samuel of the fact that he has rejected Saul as king of Israel. When Saul, Saul, was a chosen, Saul was chosen as king, watch this, because the people wanted to be like the other nations around them. People, the nation, the Israelites, wanted to be like the other nations around them. They had kings, physical kings, physical pharaohs. And so now God at the time was ruling our people, us, and now we want to be like everybody else. I just want to lay it out there. And so, my God, they wanted to be like the other nations around them. Up to this point, my God, God had ruled the nation, raising up leaders as they were needed. God did. As they were needed, God raised up leaders in the natural. This was how things operated all the way from the time of Moses through the, day, through the days of the judges. My God, they were warned. That elevating a man to the throne would be would bring political corruption and trouble. He was Samuel. I mean, Saul was a fine physical specimen, standing head and shoulders taller than anyone else in Israel. You'll find that in First Samuel nine and two, church. But when 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 he when he made him, he may have been a giant. My God, Saul among men, he was a, he was spiritually dwarfed in the spirit. Stay with me. He was a giant in the natural. Talking about he was handsome, tall, head and shoulders over everybody. Talking about Saul. But you will find out as we move forward, though, but he was, oh, my God, weak spiritually. He was powerful external, but weak spiritually. Are y'all with me so far? Saul was a jealous man. See, jealousy make you weak spiritually. Who lived for the praises of people. Get delivered from the opinions of people. He was a jealous man, he was, he was an angry man, and he lived. We're talking about the king for the praises of the people. Oh, my God. Come on, somebody. He tended, talking about Saul, to overstep his boundaries and was guilty of disobedience to the commands of the Lord. As a result, y'all, the Lord God mm, rejected Saul as king of his people. Because of Saul's rebellion, God chose a young man named David. When God chooses David, he was choosing an unlikely candidate. Once I get through the introduction, we're going to get going. When God chose David, he was choosing an unlikely candidate. That sounds like some of us. God is talking about this afternoon. Whoever thought, Minister Tedrick, that God would choose you? Whoever would have thought, Brandy, that you would have got a pardon like your pastor? Whoever thought, Virgil, that you escaped that lifestyle, my God, with no diseases? Who... He made 66 years bow down. Amen. T, he made bullets and stuff and things you've been in, woman of God, cease. Amen. See, some of y'all got to understand what God has really done for you. And if God didn't have a plan for you, he would have allowed you to be killed a long time ago. So God, God, God chose an unlikely candidate for such a lofty and powerful office. In God's choice of David as king, we can see the process God uses to choose someone. So this is going to be sermon number one in my series. My series is titled, Down Goes Goliath. And my title of my sermon is Preparation to Kill a Giant. The Spirit of God dropped in my spirit, my God, as I was talking to my wife, different things. She always reminded me that it's in, already in you. Just get still and let God speak to you. But in order for you to be able to kill the giants that's in your life presently and those that's coming, y'all stay with me, that's in your life presently and those that's coming, there's preparation. 
You can shout all you want. You can speak in tongues all you want. You can run around the church all you want. But if you have not put in the time in the dark, you are not ready to face the giants in the natural. Are y'all with me so far? So, my God, put point number one on the screen. Let's look at God's choices are sovereign. God's choices are sovereign. God's in control. God always got a plan. Don't never count God out. I don't care what you're facing this, with, facing this afternoon. Don't never count God out. I don't care how hard it feels, how much vexation you have in your spirit. I don't care what the doctors have said. My God, yes, use wisdom. My God, I'm not saying don't go to the doctor, don't get the things done. But you got to understand, never count God out when it comes to your life. Because God created you. Human beings didn't create you. God knows the plans that he has for you. And so up on the point number one, right, A. Let's look at God's sovereign providence. God's sovereign providence. I look up the word providence. That means a manifestation of divine cur or direction. Manifestation of divine cur or direction. God got everything under control. Look at your neighbor and say, God got everything under control. <laughs> it is because of rebellion, though, church, and rejection that God begins the process. Oh, my God, God begins a process of putting positioning, my God, and making the next king behind rebellion, my God, and rejection. Don't think that you're the only person that God can use. Don't think that you all that God got. I probably got a whole lot of you somewhere. Yeah. Some of them are still in jail, in prison, under the bridge. Some of them ain't gave their life to Christ. But prom I trust you, you're not the only one. God always got a ram in the bush, baby. And so, my God, Saul got full of himself. What happened to Saul is what my spiritual father always reminded me. He said, don't get intoxicated off your harvest. As God begin to give increase naturally and spiritually, continue to walk humble, continue to stay grateful and stay anchored. I've been doing it for 20 plus years. Saul got intoxicated off of his harvest. He got to the point where he felt like he could do what he wanted to do when he wanted to do it, like some of us right now. We picking and choosing what we will do. And so it's because of rebellion and rejection that God's begin this process of choosing a new king for Israel. He was ready to raise up, talking about God, a new king, and the people had been made ready to accept it. See, though, my God, it's time for leadership. Anytime there's new leadership, I, as a pastor, me and my wife, got to make sure that the congregation is ready to receive new leadership. The Bible says, my God, when the pro God started the process, my God, also God made the people ready to receive new leadership. See, that's strategic timing in God. Just because it look good, sound good, and feel good don't mean it's time. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Even though you got the money, even though you got people telling you can do it, you should do it, it wasn't time. People told me I was called a pastor long, many, 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 many years, probably 10 years before I even got asked to call the pastor. But it wasn't time. Amen. And I thank God I was anchored enough, submitted enough, and committed enough to God in private. When I was at Greenwood, I didn't let people's voices, my God, entice me out of God's timing and will. Because if I have went before my time, my God, I probably wouldn't be where I'm at today. Amen. Because there's lessons, my God, that you got to learn, Brother Brandon, along the way that prepares you for the office that God has called you to, or the assignment that God has called you to. Who? that's a beautiful sight, son. Thank you, Lord. Mm. So there's timing for everything. Somebody looks at them and say, timing for everything. Timing. Oh, my God, I just got a leap in my spirit. Oh, my God, you don't control nothing, neither do I. You don't control nothing, though you think, and I think that we do, but we don't. Because any given time, God can step in and break our will and let his will manifest. Oh, you might have said, I'm done, but God said, no, you ain't. You're just going through right now. It's just a matter of time. Somebody give God a hand. <laughs> hey, my God. Go on out there experience that. You'll be on back. After you have tasted the goodness of the Lord, you can't go back. You may try. I said you may try, but you can't go back. Oh, my God. You may try, but you can't go back. Mm. And so the people was ready to receive the new king. God was working behind the scenes during difficult days in Israel to prepare the way for his plan to be fulfilled. These are difficult, difficult times. The king has fell in sin. The king of the nation had got in rebellion and disobedience. See what I'm trying to say? And so, therefore, when the king, when the head, my God, is out of order, the body starts getting out of order. And so God's people, my God, was in a tough place when God began to raise up the process of this new king. But God already had this in place for the beginning of time. Oh, my God. Saul didn't catch God slipping. Come on, somebody. Oh, my God. God knew that this was going to take place. My God. He knew that before he allowed Samuel to anoint Saul as king. My God. He knew that he already had this his successor, my God, already in place. My God. But this is the thing right here. When a king got out of order, everything connected to the king started getting out of order. You got to know the word of God to know what I'm talking about. That's why as the head of your house, men, when you 
you out of order, everything connected to you gets out of order. Oh my God, I can't get nobody to say nothing. And some of us women, I'll help you, I love you, I love you, but you gotta allow your man, if he's qualified, keep work, if he's qualified, to be the head of the house. Because just cause he's a man don't make him the head of the house, baby. The Bible says, follow my God, submit to your husband as unto the Lord, as unto the Lord. You are required through the word of God to submit to your husband as unto the Lord. What do that mean? As long as he following God, I can follow him. When he shift, I shift. Come on, somebody. Oh, my God. Mm. That's Bible right there. I know some of you don't like it. It is what it is. Some of us men, we have shifted, and now she ain't following. Now you're mad at her. Listen what the Bible says. You can't pick and choose. As unto the Lord. I don't want to hear nothing about God called me to submit to my husband. He submit to your husband if he's in God's will. If his brother ain't in God's will, you better do. Mm, I ain't telling you to divorce, but you ain't got to submit to that mess. I'm careful, but I'm not I'm saying. I'm giving you a Bible. I'm just giving it to you real. I know it's the truth. Thank you for covering your pastor, woman of God. So God begin to work. Come on, somebody give God a hand. So God began to work against rebellion, but God always got a plan. Write down B up on the point number one. Let's look at this plan. God had a sovereign plan. Sovereign plan. God was planning. That is the planning, my God, is the act of process of making a plan or plans. An act or a process of making or planning plans. Samuel was told where to go to find the new king. What God calls for, he provides for. It appears that the Lord had been arranging everything to bring his chosen king into the world at precisely the right time, the right moment, I mean. If you look back at the ancestry, I want to give you a little history, the ancestry of King David, you will find the hand of the Lord moving and shaping events. You know, I'm really starting to understand how history connects line upon line, precept upon precept. My God, things in the Old Testament, every word in the Bible matters. Oh, my God, every word in the Bible is significant, my God. And so as you begin to look at the ancestry that I'm getting ready to explain you of the process that God started of selecting his king. Mm. Oh, my God, if you look back at the ancestry of King David, you will find the hand of the Lord moving and shaping events. One of David's ancestors was a woman by the name of Rahab. Rahab was a harlot. Another word that I won't use, but you know what it is. Come on, somebody. She was a harlot. This is part of the ancestry. Never count yourself out because your bloodline may have some contamination in it. And so, my God, she was a harlot. I mean, Ray, Ray, uh, named Rahab. Uh, she had been saved out of a pagan adultery and brought into the nation of Israel. God specifically brought the woman of God, my God, into the nation of Israel. She was a pagan. She was ostracized. She wasn't part of the bloodline, but God brought her in. Ooh, blood covenant. Mm. You have to be born, Abraham, but you're grafted into Abraham. Don't get me started. Ooh, my God, she was brought in. I thank God that he brought us in behind Calvary. Somebody give God a hand for Calvary. Ooh, my God. Mm. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And so she married, Rahab married a man by the name of Solomon in Matthew 1 and 5. Write it down. That's the genealogy in Matthew of God's bloodline and David's. And, and, and became the mother of a man named Boaz. Rahab became the mother of Boaz. Everybody talking about, I'm waiting on my Boaz. Where your Boaz come from? <laughs> I'm waiting on my, yeah, yeah, but your, guess where your old Boaz come from? He come from a mm, harlot. <laughs> Hey, he come from a heart and somebody give God a hand. I know the devil is a lie. I don't want no man to do. Oh, Lord, I love you. Mm. Boaz also married a Gentile girl. Look how God is bringing outsiders into the covenant. God, my God, who, my God, Boaz married a Gentile girl brought out of paganism as well by the sovereign grace of the Lord. And her name was Ruth. Ruth and Boaz were the grandparents, the great grandparents of a boy named David. These events were not accidental. They were a part of the perfect plan. This was not a coincidence. It was the mighty hand of the Lord. Let me help you this afternoon, church. You're not an accident. Everything is working out to the conformity of God's will. That's the Bible. See what I say? Don't you know you don't have to be a part, my God, but God can graft you in. 
Oh, my God. God begin to work his sovereign plan. Ooh, oh, thank you. God is in control of everything that's going on in your life right now. I understand some circumstances, situations that you're dealing with has troubled you, my God, and even traumatized you, my God. And you don't know, my God, what your next is. You don't know what God is saying, what God is doing. And you're saying win, 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 win. If you just rest, my God, in those two things right there, that God is in control and God is planning everything according to his will. That was heavy right there. Learn how to rest in God. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews, there's a rest that many people don't get to in the end because of unbelief. There's a rest, my God, that God has afforded to the people of God that many of them would never, re never receive because they're too busy trying to work everything out according to the flesh. They want to do everything. They want to know everything before they do everything. They want to know everything before they do everything. There's a rest. Who, my God, don't you know you could be going through all type of stuff, my God, and be smooth as the other side of the pillar. Come on, somebody. You could be in a cool place with God. Who, my God, I'm talking about turbulence is all around. Turbulence in the home. Turbulence with the kids. Turbulence in the marriage. Turbulence in the finances. Turbulence on the job. All kind of stuff going on, and you just cool. See what I'm trying to say? Because you're resting in God and you're trusting in God. Who, my God. Don't you know some of your mistakes? Some of the, ooh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Lord, have mercy. I ain't going to try to finish and I'm good. Don't you know some of the mistakes, some of the things right now, ladies and men? Because ladies not the only one that deal with shame. Some of you right now are sitting in the church with full of shame. Now, should you be grieved about some of the things you may have said or done? Yes. But it ain't accidental. God got a plan. Bishop called it going from shame to fame. Come on, my fibber chef. I can't get no. See, some of you might go. Oh, my God, you let your shame, my God, define who you are. But God allowed you to experience that because somebody needs your testimony. Come on, somebody. Ooh, why not you? My God, God needs you to go through that. He picked you out just to go through that so you can testify about the goodness of the Lord. God know who can cross over, my God. You got to step over shame. You got to make shame be still. And you got to tell yourself, I'm using shame to advance God's kingdom. I'm using shame, my God, to move forward in God. Shame won't define me. Shame ain't going to paralyze me. Come on. Hey, somebody to give God a hand in the church all of us my God all of us has done things all of us has done things my God that we can be ashamed of. I'm ashamed of a whole lot of stuff but it ain't gonna put me in prison I'm even my God ashamed of some of the mistakes I made as a pastor not sin some of the mistakes not sin that I could have do better with but I'm not afraid to be in prison <sighs> Down go Goliath. Come on, somebody. Down go Goliath, baby. I got too much God in me to be in prison. The devil is a lie. Oh, my God. And so God is planning. God is planning. God is planning. There is no accidents. Oh, that was an accident. No, it wasn't. It's all working together. God knows what he's doing. The family you was born to and the mama that you that. God knew that. That ain't no accident. Some of y'all, your mama said this and ran off. And I, that, that's okay. God know all. Your father did that and didn't do this. God know that. There ain't no accident. God know. You see what I'm trying to say? You know, and I'm not saying God is the cause of it. Oh, my God. I see you, woman of God. I'm not saying God is the cause of it. But God can use what the enemy meant for bad. He will turn it around for good. It's part of the plan, baby. I said it's part of the plan. But you got to understand. Thank you, Holy Ghost. You and I, I, you got to understand, my God. Oh, my God, that there is no accidents in God. That's why you got to be in God, not church. There's a whole lot of accidents when you're out of God, but there's not no accidents in God. Who am I talking to in the church? That's why you got to get in God. Oh, but you got to understand that God is working this thing out, baby. That's why the very thing that could have killed you didn't kill you. That's why when you hear a certain song, you're watching. When the woman of God was talking about death, God made death be still. That should have leaped in some of you men and some of you women's life. Oh, my God, death ain't just with a gun, baby. How about your purpose? How about you thought about committing suicide, but you didn't? How about you, my God, you almost gave up, but you didn't? Oh, you made counsel be still. Come on, Tequila, stand up and give God a hand, daughter. Oh, my God, come on, Brandy, stand up and give God counsel be still. Oh, Jesus. See, what we got to be careful as we get to the point because we got to understand now, now you're free. God can't hold you accountable to something, my God, that you don't know. But you got to understand everything you're experiencing right now, everything from the past, everything from the present, and even the future that's coming, God got it all worked out. That's why you got to stay in God's will. I teach y'all the safest places in his will because there's a whole lot of things that you and I will encounter going forward. But if you stay in God's will, it can't never get to you. Don't go through no unnecessary suffering because of disobedience. Quit going through all this H double E L L because you want to do it your way. Submit and surrender and watch what God do in your life. 
Some of us is frustrated because we're in disobedience because we're trying to pick and choose what we will do and when, when we'll do it. Do it the way he said do it. And the Bible says that Samuel did everything God told him to do. That's what the book say. 1 Samuel 16, 1, 2, and 3. Samuel did everything that the Lord told him to do. Not some things, everything. Are y'all with me so far? God got everything working out. There is no accident and there is no coincidence in God. Are y'all with me so far? Um, number three, put this. Let's look at God's sovereign power. Providence, planning, and power. Oh, my God. Systematic. Systematic. Sovereignness, planning, and power. Don't you know that God is, all, the Bible says the earth is his footstool. That's powerful. The Bible says, Sandra, that God sits high and he looks low. Oh, he can see us down here. <laughs> Woo, he's sitting so high, he got a laser focus. Oh, my God. He sees us down here. We look like little, little ants to God. But the Bible says the hairs on your head is numbered. God got laser focus. Oh, my God. Uh, Barry, you in scooter with these birds and stuff. He know how many hairs you got in your bird. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. God got laser focus. Oh, tell Shante to count the hers. My God, she can't, but God can. He ain't got to count. He can tell you how many it is. That's how precise God is, my God. God is all powerful. And if you really believe that, that means everything that's on top of you, everything that you're going through, if you submit it to God, he has the power to destroy it. Oh, my God, who am I talking to in the church? Mm, mm, mm. Many people have great plans. Many people have great plans and dreams. It's good to dream. It's good to plan. That's wisdom. I always have a plan. Make sure your plans is God's plans, not your plans, though. Because when you plan something and it ain't God, it ain't birth. First, you get your plans on the altar. Your altar don't have to be this, 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 this here. Your altar can be in your bathtub. It can be in your car. It can be in your bedroom. It can be in your closet. Come on, somebody. You got to go get your plans off the altar. Go get your plans off the altar because if it's God, God going to bless it. If it ain't, he ain't going to do nothing with it. Then you're going to be frustrated because you're trying to execute a plan that God ain't going to give you the grace to accomplish. Ooh, that was heavy. You're frustrated, many of you right now, because you're trying to do something that God said, that ain't what you're supposed to be doing. Or if it is what you're supposed to be doing, you're out of timing. Because when God has called you to do something, he's going to give you the grace to do it. It's not going to be vexing. Not saying you're not going to have no trials that come up against it, but he's going to give you the grace to go through it. It won't be so dominated and vexing when it's God. Oh, my God. God, give me the grace to pastor. God, give me the grace. You need grace to be a husband. You need grace to be a wife. You need grace. Come on, to be a, be a mother. You need grace, baby. Don't get out of God's timing. So you got to reevaluate. My God, this thing seems real hard. Ask yourself, am I supposed to be doing this or am I out of God's timing? Write that down. I know I said for better or for worse. My God, did I get that? Mm, mm, mm. Continue to dream. Continue to plan. Just make sure you bask it in God's presence. Many people have great dreams and plans, but they have no power. Or they lack power to bring them to pass. Your dreams. Good vision. You know, you ever been around that person? I always got great ideas. But when you look at their life, you see emptiness and voidness. They always talking about God told me this. But when you see their life, you don't see no consistency of God in their life. Why is God always speaking to you? If God is really speaking to anybody at that level, there should be some consistent patterns and choices and decisions that you have been making that encourage somebody to come follow you. If nobody is following you, it's a reason why. Even you, either you ain't, you ain't reaching out or your life is too regular for them to follow. No, no, listen, listen to what I said. You either ain't reaching out, Christians. That means you ain't discipling. You ain't going, you ain't, Matthew 28, 19, the first word, go therefore. That's called, that's an activation word. You got to be active, activated in the kingdom. Ain't no squat. I told the new members, my God, back in the streets when we was banging, I used to squat. It's called squat. You squat. Come on, somebody. Ain't no squat in the kingdom, baby. Ain't no squatting. Many of you are squatting on God. Let me show you again up here because you're looking. My God, many of you are doing just like this in the spiritual realm. You're squatting. That, 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 that looks good in the natural, but it's terrible in the spirit. Ain't no squatting in God. You got to be activated in God, baby. Yeah. They don't want it. They don't want it. Somebody give God a hand. Somebody give God a hand. Oh, this middle section. Come on. Somebody clap. This middle section is. Woo. Somebody give God a hand. Mm. Mm. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. 
my God, my God, 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 God. Remember this right here. This is the power. What God proposes, he disposes. My verbiage, what he called for, he provides for. What lessons can we learn from God's sovereign choice? God is choosing his man. God has chosen and has chosen his man. So what can we learn? As I told y'all, there is no accidents in life. Everything that occurs is a part of the bigger plan. There is no accident to my new members, pleasure, and all y'all that join the ministry. That's no accident from the testimonies that y'all said in new, in new members about how y'all been drawn to this ministry. Many of you, my God, Henry, how you was drawn to the ministry. Even though, even though you drove past this church and liked the name of it, where Henry at? Where, where your hand at? I'm looking for Henry. There you go. You drove past the church and you're like, man, that sounds good. Going on for Christ. I like that. My God. And then all of a sudden, God, ooh, thank you, Holy Ghost. God is speaking. Stay with me. 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 He drove past the church two years ago and he seen the sign called Going Hard for Christ Church. And he said, ooh, ooh, that leaped in the spirit. Not knowing, my God, that God had to reposition Oliver. <laughs> oh, my God, to connect with him. They was working together. <laughs> oh, my God. God strategically said, okay, my God, you're going to see this sign. But I'm going to send you a son that's a disciple that's going to invite you to the church. And like he said in new members, my God, whoever thought two years later, my God, now I'm a member of the very church that I said, ooh, that sounds good. God strategically put Oliver in his life so he could be here today. Somebody give God a hand. See what y'all say? Two years he drove by. He hadn't met Oliver yet. It wasn't time for him to meet Oliver. I threw a series of events. Oliver shifted. My God, look at Oliver. Yeah, you smile, Oliver, because you got you need it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God, my God. Through a series of events, my God, God shifted my son. But guess what? When he shifted him, who, when you stepped down from that, that place, son, he had him in mind. Yeah. And there's a whole lot connected to you. I'm expecting you to bring some more people. Come on, somebody. Oh, my God. God's planning. Ain't no accidents in God. Ain't no coincidence in God. That's how God operates, baby. Get out God's way so God can get in the way and watch what he do in your life, baby. Hey, who am I talking to? Get out God's way and let God get in the way and watch what he do in your life. Ain't no accidents and ain't no coincidence in God. God get everything worked out. And so now, my God, I can't get no free ice cream, but that's okay. I got souls now. <laughs> I missed that. We need to go up there. Yeah, yeah. I used to go up there and get free ice cream, and I'd be sitting out there, yeah. I was kind of just slim down a little bit. And God thought he had me in mind when he shifted him, too. And I was getting way out here. I can't get Woo, gee. See, that's God showing y'all. Ain't no coincidence, ain't no accident. It's no accident that you're here today. I see you, Cheryl. Ain't no accident. It's a reason. It's a reason. Ain't no accident. Ain't no accident, Maya. My God, that you wanted to stay where you was at, but then you came over and said, okay, I'm cool. I can, I can deal with Pastor. I like Pastor. Pastor got flavor. I'm serious. You know what I'm saying? Because God needed it because where you was going. That took you for it's going to take you. Now I got to get you ready for where you're going. You're getting ready to go off to college, baby. You're getting ready to take us to business. My God, you need that, that firm foundation to move you to another level. Oh, my God. I'm trying to shift. I just got one. Did I look at you back there, Brother Shannon? My God. Ooh, I give God. Come on, let's give God a hand for Shannon back there. Come on, stand up, Shannon. That's a son right there. Y'all look at Brother Shannon back there. Clean and sober. My God, set free. My God. Hey. Clean and sober. Yeah, that's the son of the house right there. Oh, my God. Yeah, clean and sober. Now doing good. Now he got people sitting up under him. Oh, my God. He helping get clean and sober. Let's give them a hand. Come on, going off to Christ Church. See, this thing is all working together for the good. I could go on and on. I got one more. Let me give God some glory. My God, I look at you, Jamie. Huh? I look at you, Jamie. Huh? I look at how your mama and your daddy and I formed a relationship with me and my wife, my God, and Andre and, uh, and your sister and all them, how we started way back when y'all was kids. My God, now you clean and sober over a hundred and some days, clean and sober, a year or however. My God, you got married, you got kids, you've been a priest, you've been a prophet. He was a little bitty man. He was a little bitty man, my God. But when he got up under, he was struggling, my God. But God delivered him. God restored it. I didn't know that I was going to end up marrying him. I didn't know I was going to end up marrying Alex. Me and my wife didn't know all that stuff. I wasn't even pastor. I was just glad to be free, my God. But God had everything worked out. He brought him in my life. I didn't marry all the internet's children. I can't get nobody to say that right there. Oh, my God. You never know, baby Cole. 
Oh, I can't. I got to move forward. I'm just trying to lay it out. I'm trying to get y'all to see. I'm boasting in God. And so there go Baby Cole back there. Y'all know Baby Cole, former gangster, my God, from, the, from, from, from Hoover. You know what I'm trying to say? I was a blood. My God, me and Baby Cole didn't like each other. We somewhat did, but we somewhat didn't. My God, back in the day, we never did really just cross each other's path like that because Baby Cole had love for the homie. My God, but at the end of the day, he was from a different set. I'm flowing, my, my Morgan. Watch this. This is purpose, baby. My God, this I ain't playing up here, man. You know what I'm saying? This is real serious up here yeah. with me. I ain't playing no games right now. And so the man of God, my God, was a crip and I was a blood. My God, we crossed each other path, but me and baby old Cole didn't do nothing with each other. But yeah, think about that. You got a crip, my God, that really couldn't stand the blood. My God, now I'm his pastor. Somebody give God a hand. That's all God. That's all God. That's all God. Amen, Sharon. Come on, give God a hand one more time, baby. Yeah. I'm just trying to tell you, my God, God got everything under control. Everything is under control. It ain't no coincidence that you sitting up under this pastor. You needed an untraditional pastor. You needed somebody that God has brought out. My God, this has opened an open book. My God, that God has delivered. My God, who my God is set free. I ain't got nothing to hide, baby. It is what it is. My God, you ain't gonna find too much more real than this, baby, because I'm gonna keep it on a dollar at all times with you, my God. I'm free so you can get free. God brought me out so you can come out. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Who my God. Oh my God, I'm gonna go a little farther. I look at Brother Sherry over here. Sherry, I, 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 Sherry's like, Sherry's one of my heroes growing up. He growed up right in front of me, my God. And I was a little kid, I said, Lord, he's always drive Trans Ams with T-Tops clean. I would tell you, keep his cars clean and meticulous, just like me. Oh, my God, we like stuff right, my God. And I would always go down there and watch him clean his cars up, my God. I growed up watching him, idolizing him, my God. And now he's sitting in the church. He said, I ain't going nowhere. You are my pastor. But keep in mind, this man seen me from a child, seen me in my drug addiction, seen me in my gang life. And now he's sitting up on here with great respect of, oh, my God, somebody give God. Hey. I could go on and on. Why am I doing it? I'm trying to show you never know why. Janice didn't want to go to the jails. I ain't like them people. I don't like them people. I'm different from them. But she didn't know that the ministry that God called her to, this is facts, y'all. I'm trying to show y'all the power and the planning of God. I don't want to deal with those people. I'm not like them. They different from me. Talking about people that's in jail. But my God, and she rebuttal and rejected my God. And I told her, God called you to go to the jails. Who my God, I was way, I was way back in the minister. I wouldn't even pastor in there. My God, but God told me, you going into the jail. No, I ain't. The devil is a lie. She used to say, my God, but her ministry, just the beginning, my God. Who my God, most of her people adjudicated from jail and prison and stuff like that. <laughs> that goes to Brother Sister Fitz here. Y'all stand up back there, some of just again. Y'all come on, stand up back there. That's some of y'all back there. Amen. Who my God. Hey! Hey! What about just showed y'all? God is connecting the eyes and dot the T's. Oh, God is connecting the eyes and dot the T's. God is connecting the eyes and dot the T's in your life. Well, why he use people's testimony? Because they're free and I know my people. Everyone I just tested about is free. Now I look at you, little sister Ruble. Jackie Ruble, my homeboy. That Jackie daughter. You know what I'm trying to say? Another crip. She's a former crip. I'm trying to, now I'm passing his daughter. Look at God. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. See, some of y'all this don't make no sense to, but some of us understand divine workings and the divine callings. See, all this stuff my God has put together. Everything God is lying and lying upon lying, precept upon precept. My God, it ain't no coincidence, brother, peoples that you heard now. My God, it ain't no coincidence, friends, set up, my God, that you come this way by an encounter. It ain't no coincidence that dad led you here. My, oh, my God, that God led you, my God, and your family to this ministry. Mama, when you had quit on, you didn't quit on God, but you hadn't been to church in many, many years. Look at Mama down today. We vibe. My God, one of the strongest women in the church. My God, her daughter stem is back there. It took going over Christ's church to revive her. It took going over Christ to revive her. Who am I talking to in the church oh we talking about a woman been in church all her life she got turned off on church but then she came to Christ and she started doing Christ and now she's one of the strongest men, uh, leaders in the church my God one more time give God a hand oh my God I got one more I got one more y'all want to hear another what am I trying to do I'm boasting on God what am I trying to do? I'm trying to show you that everybody that's in my life is sitting in this church right now. It was divine strategy. It was God's planning, my God. It was God's will. It was God's sovereignty. It was God's power, my God, that you be sitting here today. 
And so I look at my daughter over Asia. Stand up, Asia. Come on. Stand up, daughter. My God, you knew I was coming. That's why you tried to hide from me. Oh, my God. But this is my God. My Asia, my God. Her and my son used to be in love. She still love him, but it's a different type of love. My God. But she, 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 she watched me develop into where I'm at. This is Juju's, my God, former girlfriend. She was trying to say, and so now we was talking not too long ago, but she was telling my wife and my daughter about her. She said, ain't it something that, I, that she used to go with Juju, but now I'm her pastor. Yeah. I wonder if she be sitting here if she seen me some way, another way outside the church house. Yeah. Keep in mind, you talking about somebody that was over my house every day. I wonder why I'd be a pastor if she seen me living something outside of the church. I'm trying to help you. Now I'm a pastor. Somebody give God the glory. I'm just trying to show you, your life matters. Your life matters. Oh, I could go on and on. I'll see you back there, baby. I got partners in here that I did a whole lot of things with, my God, and now they in the church. But I'm going to leave that alone. I'm boasting on God. I ain't boasting on me. Yeah. What, am I, what did I just do? Your life matters. Yeah. Out there. Yeah. Out there. Your life matters out there. Who in my life got to suffer while I remain the same? Line upon line, precept upon precept. Your life matters. Everything you've been through matters. Everything God has brought you out of matters. And whatever he brought you out of, submit and let him use it to advance God's kingdom. It's no coincidence that you got planted in this church. And you'll never fully benefit until you get all the way in. You will reap some benefits, but I'm not into reaping. I need all mine. I need all mine. A lot of y'all then got free from all type of habits and drug addiction stuff because God had to get your pastor free before he can get you free. A lot of y'all don't understand the people that you're sitting around and the people that's up in this ministry, they have keys, as I taught y'all, to unlock your freedom. And freedom is not just drugs. Freedom not, I'm not, I'm not, there's all type of addictions, baby, and it's not just alcohol and drugs. You know what you're dealing with in private. See what I'm trying to say? That's why you can never take the body of Christ. You need each other. I need you. My wife needs you. Everybody in here has a role to play. That's why it's critical that you get connected and get in. Quit being enticed, my God, to try to do things the way you want to do it. And so you can get the full benefit. God bought you here because somebody needs what you got. Somebody needs your testimony. Somebody needs your deliverance. Somebody needs to see you come out of the mess that you're already in because you're going to help them come out of it. Yeah, yeah. Some of the things that you're scared to bring to the forefront, somebody needs that so they can get free. You're holding up somebody's freedom because you're too ashamed. Yeah. Yeah. Like somebody got a hell to put you in. Free people don't think like that. Free people ain't worried about what you think about them. People that's desperate and hungry, they trying to get free. They ain't worried about all that mess. That's why you got to get delivered from the opinions of people. Mm. Let me finish this as I get ready to get us up out of here. My God. Mm. Everything that occurs, my God, God has a bigger plan. Somebody looked at that and said, God got a bigger plan. God is working, my God, often behind the scenes. God is working often behind the scenes in ways that we cannot comprehend to accomplish his plans and his purposes. He's working behind the scenes. We can't comprehend it. We're looking at this situation like, Lord, how in the world is this going to work out for me? How in the world is this going to work to my benefit? This, I heard what Pastor people were saying, but I just don't. I just ain't going to be able to do it. God is working behind the scenes. Oh, my God, you don't want to miss next week, I promise you. You don't want to miss next week because you want, you'll, you'll miss the impartation to kill your giants. Don't take off. Finish the series. Amen. Make it mandatory. Put a demand on yourself to be here. Don't take off and bring somebody. Amen. See what I'm trying to say? Because you're not going to get the full, my, full picture. You, you, I don't want you leaving up out here dwarfed. I'm giving you a few of them, but I ain't giving it all to you. You got to come get it all. You can't, you can't kill a giant on partial information. Can't kill no giant on half-hearted information and partial information. Got to come get it all. Got a purpose in your mind. I'm coming back to church. If the Lord is coming and you ain't in heaven, you should be in church. Mm. Write down, of course, the familiar script in Romans 8, 28. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God 
and are called according to his purpose. His purpose. Oh, my God, Brother Brandon, when Pastor Manny then brought you down into a man's encounter, when God saved me April the 3rd for 1995, baby, he had you in mind. Come on, somebody. See what I'm trying to say? All things. It ain't no coincidence, my, my brother, that they brought you here from Oklahoma City. Now you stuck and you can't go back. <laughs> oh, my God. Why did I say that? Because he called his parole officer and said, look, I got to, I need to. He saw the advice. He said, look, I'm not, I ain't coming back. I need, to, I, I need to be right here in Tulsa. And God gave him favor and his probation officer released him. And now he's here in Tulsa. <laughs> Amen. Favor that you were talking about in the orientation. Because they didn't have to do that. They could have said, no, you stay down here, which would have took him away from the church. But they gave him favor. I told him just what he said. Should I say something? I said, yes, you should. Don't say nothing if you want to. That boy's going to have a warrant out for your arrest. <laughs> ain't that what I told you, son? To cut business. Because I ain't going to tell you to do stuff wrong. A lie is a lie. Do it right. Yeah. Go to him. And if he tell you no, you sit back until God change it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> My God, let me get ready to bring it. God, will, God is well able to bring his plan to pass. God will bring his plan for you to pass. God will bring his plan for you to pass. He will never propose a plan that he is not able to accomplish. See, some of y'all really need to understand that. God will never propose a plan that he's not able to accomplish. Everything, Philippians 1 and 6, he who begun a good work in you is able to complete it to the day of Jesus Christ's return. Everything that God has proposed for your life, a purpose for your life, he will fulfill. Y'all listen to me up top. Everything, Kenya. It was no coincidence that your daughter brought you to this church. You needed this church. This church needed you. Everything is working out according to God's plan. I'm trying to hammer that in because many of you don't understand. It's uncomfortable because it's part of his plan. You didn't need traditional church. You needed God's purpose and will in this next season in your life. Some of you, my God, you're so tired of the same old, same old. You need something different. But your difference don't mean that you shift churches. Your difference means you have a paradigm shift in your soul. Yeah. 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 If you don't shift in your soul, you'll go from church to church to church to church. You'll go to a bigger church, my God, because you had it. Because you think, my, what you need is in a bigger church. So you'll leave purpose and God's plan, and many of them have, because they didn't want to shift in their soul. Ooh, that's it. Stay planted. It's a plan. It's a plan that he put together. I didn't put it together. He did. I'm about to. Mm. My God. God's sovereignty choices extend to every area of your life. Do not remember I taught y'all, my God, you don't want to just have a, a, a church life. You want the gospel to affect every area of your life. And the gospel is that powerful enough, my God, we can affect every area of your life. Every area. Somebody say every area. Y'all yeah, stay with me. Come on, say every area, every area of your life. Nothing that you, oh my God, nothing that you and I try to do will be accomplished without God's favor. I'm reminded of my brother when he tried to go to the NBA. He went to, I think it was four or five different junior colleges. John Starks. He went to four or five different junior colleges trying to get a scholarship, good enough to play, but they didn't, didn't never, never got a scholarship. So he checked out of school. My God, he dropped out of school and went and he stayed at home. See, I'm trying to say, and then one day my brother Monty got out of prison and encouraged John to get back to playing basketball. And John Reed, uh, Monty helped put that fire back in my brother. And from that day forward, my God, John got an invitation. A series of events took place, but he got an invitation to go try out for the New York Knicks. My God, that's when, uh, and when you go try out, my God, there's two or three hundred other people trying out for some of the same positions you're trying out for. But John did something, my God, I'm talking about foolish faith. My God, Scott McCorders at Greenwood Christian Center Transformation. I was working as a, as a security, a police officer at, at the airport. And John got a one-way ticket. John didn't take no suitcases or nothing. He, and they had one plane, one, one flight going out at 6 o'clock in the morning. And John did not want to miss the flight. So John slept in, my God, in the airport. And so he had a bag. My God, he was sleeping. So Scott worked the night shift. He walked up on him. He looked. Cause him and John went to school with Edison together. And he looked. And he's like, John. He woke down. He said, John, what you doing? He said, man, it's only one flight going to New York. I've been invited to the, Nick, the Knicks camp. My God, I can't miss this flight. So he slept in the airport yeah. so he wouldn't miss the flight. But he told himself, he said, I'm not coming back. If I come back, I'm coming back with a contract. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So he went down there, my God. And he made the team, a whole series of events, my God, how he ended up making the team, my God, and so forth. But he purposed in his mind. 
that when I leave from her, when I come back to talk to Oliver, I'm going to have a million dollar contract. And he did. See, I'm trying to say, of course, the rest of it is history. What am I trying to say? That that was all part of the plan. See, I'm trying to say he had to face defeat. He got so discouraged, my God, to where he could have quit, and he did quit. But thank God for my brother. Monty got out of prison, my God, after doing 13 years. He was out just long enough, maybe six months, my God. And he went back to prison on parole violation, but he had, it was God had my brother, who, my God, the whole plan executed. He said he let Monty out of parole, out on parole just for six months, and then he allowed his butt to go back because he wasn't ready to be, come on, somebody. And then he stayed out for six months, and he got John up and played basketball every single day. He revived him. God used my brother to restore him, my God. And after he got, after Monty's mission was done, Monty went back to prison. He's out now, I've been out. See, I'm trying to say, that's how God works. Yeah. And the rest of it, of course, you know, is history. One of the greatest dunks in my God in history come with the left hand. I can't get nobody to say nothing right now. <laughs> but see how God executes his plan? Yes, he does. Don't never count God out. Yeah. But are you willing to sleep in the airport? Yeah. If you purpose your mind that I'm not, I, I'm, I'm going to let the devil no longer get to take down, go, Goliath. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> are you yeah. at the point, my God, where you ain't going to let nothing continue to rob you? Of your peace. Are you going are you gonna continue to let fear rob you, my God? Fear is a giant that got to come down, baby. Oh my God, my God, depression, oppression, all that stuff, it got to come down. Excuses. My God, my God, all of those compromises, all of those stuff, my God, it got to come down. Because God had plans. He said, I know the plans that I have for you. God got great things in store for you. Oh my God, but you gotta be willing to embrace God's will for your life. Let me give you this and I'm done. Write down Ephesians 1, 11, chapter 1, verse 11. It says, furthermore, this is Paul talking to the Ephesian church. Furthermore, because we are united with Christ, we have received an inheritance. Look what the word of God says about the people of God in the New Testament. We have received an inheritance from God. For he chose you and I in advance. Oh, Lord, I can work that, my God. He chose you and I. The Bible says that while you and I was yet in sin, God came down and died. Even when you wasn't fit to live, and I wasn't fit to live, nor was we ready to die. God came and died. Who he chose you and I in our mess. God knew that we was going to make mistakes. Do you understand that God chose you in advance? Do you understand that Solomon, God chose you in advance? You have been chosen, Solomon. Everybody don't make it out of what you made it out of, man of God. The things, look at me, son, the things that you have experienced, Solomon, in your life from, the, from there to now, yeah. you're chosen. Oh, my God, death, my God, has to be still. Think about the things, Natalie, that you have experienced. I want y'all to understand that you are chosen vessels, the Bible says. You matter to God. Your purpose matter. Your, your, the, the plans and visions that you have for your life matters. Your children matter. Your grandchildren matters. Everything matters. You matter. If you matter, let, oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. I see y'all women. If you matter to God, why don't you matter to yourself? Love yourself. Forgive yourself. You matter. You matter. You matter. Don't let shame and depression rob you another day. Oh, my God, if it weren't for time, I'd work back and preach that. Chosen in advance. I could go on and on. Y'all know what your pastor come out of, but I was chosen. That Paul was chosen. He crucified the church, but he was still chosen. He killed Christians, but he was still chosen. Read the book of Acts, the ninth chapter. He killed and crucified Christians. Paul, who wrote Paul, who was Saul for Paul, he wrote over half of the New Testament. He was a Hitler. He was a killer. And God still, he was still chosen. Read the book of Acts, the ninth chapter. Somebody that wrote over half of the New Testament did everything he can to the kill and destroy the word. Even in the midst of his ignorance, he was chosen. Everything you've been through, brother boy, you're chosen. Everything, Ronnie, that you have come through, you're chosen. Everything me and my wife has come through, that's called we chosen. Everything you haven't endured when you stood up there and owned this pool pit, woman of God, your pastor empowered you to preach the gospel. My God, God gave you the grace to go through that, my God. That stuff you went through, Tyler, you would have killed the average person, my God. But God has chosen you, woman of God. Oh, my God, I know it's painful, sisters and niece, but you're chosen. You're chosen for it, woman of God. I'm trying to build you. You're chosen. Can't nobody, any, can't no any and everybody deal with that. You're chosen. Oh, my God. Oh, mm, my God. You husbands and wives look at each other and say, you chose it for me. Can't nobody handle me. My wife tell me, ain't nobody going to fool with you, boy. And you a mess. I ain't nobody. You, you, 
And who gonna take care of you? Ain't nobody gonna get, ain't nobody got patience to deal with you. <laughs> See, I'm talking about fearfully and wonderfully made for this king. I better ask somebody. Uh, very first lady, ain't nobody gonna, I ain't worried about you. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody gonna wanna fool with you, man. You too much. Somebody give God a hand for my wife, man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we get ready to close the service, there's preparation to killing your giants. Please, if you are able, please don't miss Sunday if the Lord delay is coming. Because you need to get the full. Some of y'all, y'all life depends. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Your next, and hear me. Your, even your life. I'm going to go on the record and say even your life. But I know for sure by the Spirit, and y'all don't always hear me say, God said this. Y'all don't hear me get up and talking like that. You got people that God told me to tell y'all, man, people be saying that be lying. That ain't nothing but flesh. I'm serious, church. I'm being serious, man. God told me to tell you, God said this. God ain't, if he's speaking that much, why your life so raggedy? 